Hey guys, JC Smith here. Uh, today we're going to work on this uh, differential for Brandon. It's a uh, it's a Ford Sterling ten and a half inch ring gear. Um, the pinion seal is out of it. It's leaking. So we're going to take it apart and put the bearings in. I've already got the cover off. I want to look at the at the pattern on the gears to see how they were wearing. Um, and I want to look at the bearings on the carrier. So I thought, well, while, I'm, while I got it sitting here, we'll go ahead and get at it. So uh, first things first, I want to pull these bearing caps off, pull the carrier out, inspect those bearings. This is a limited slip. I don't know if you guys can see this in here. But right in here are a pack of clutches. And the way this differential works is in the input shaft it spins, which turns the ring gear, okay? And then the axles come in and they are driven by the carrier. So in a normal operation they're both driven the same amount until um, one side needs to break loose from the other, being like going into an inside corner, uh, a, a right turn, a left turn, where you would need the inside wheel to turn slower than the outside wheel because the outside wheel has so much farther distance to go and the inside one obviously doesn't have to go as far. So the clutch is in there to let it break loose. Otherwise, if they were solid and you were coming to a stoplight, um, or I'm sorry, if you're coming into a turn, uh, it would keep wanting to drive you forward and wouldn't, wouldn't let you turn as easily. So that's what the clutches are for. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the carrier out inspect the bearings, get a look at inside the spiders, make sure inside the the uh, gears are all good, the teeth are all good, no weird wear or anything like that. After we get that out, um, we'll take the front apart, replace the pinion seal, um, and uh, go on from there. So I will bring you along to get this on. Um, in this that we're taking it apart, it's a good idea before you do anything to check your backlash. Backlash is how much um, play there is from the ring gear to the pinion and how they mesh together because you have another gear coming in this way that's going to turn and drive this, okay? And the amount of, the amount of um, play between this part and this part of that gear when it meshes because you have a couple gears, some are starting to mesh you'll have a couple that are at least one or two that are fully meshed and another one that is coming out of being meshed. So that's that amount of movement in there, the space, the play that's in there is called backlash. So we'll put a magnetic base on it, we'll check it, but I gotta tell you it sure looks like it's pretty close and I'm no pro so um, I really try to stay away from pinions and doing differential work because one, I don't have the tools, and two, I don't have a lot of experience with them. Um, and my fear is that the front seal's out for a reason, because it was leaking pretty good. Um, so, let's get around. As a matter of fact, let's just get a look at the front and uh, see what's going on with that. Let me get you turned around. Okay, so this is the pinion flange. This is where the drive shaft bolts to this flange. There's four threaded holes. Actually, there's eight, but there's four that you use. Alright, I just looked at this, I can tell you exactly why the seal is out of it now. Pay attention real close to this right here. I'm going to turn that pinion for you. I'll try and make that good and steady. I think you guys should be able to see that. Let me get you another angle here. Might show up better. Okay, pay attention to the the center right here. So it looks to me like that pinion, that shaft, is bent and it's wobbling around. So it wouldn't matter if I put a seal in it or it's uh 
it's still going to we're going to take it all apart and see what we got uh, this is unfortunate because I am uh, I am not very um, I don't have a lot of experience with doing pinions so um, I don't have the tooling I don't have the experience but I'm going to see if I can how much it's going to cost me to um, get the get all the tools to do it and get the parts and we'll go from there. If it's too expensive I'll start looking for a used one um, but ideally it'd be better to have a brand new one set up so let me get this torn apart and I'll bring you back Alright guys, I hope that you can hear me. I got my heater running. Uh, pinion nut is an inch and an eighth. Now normally, if I was replacing just that seal, I would count the number of exposed threads on this pinion, and I would chisel a mark in the nut and in the pinion shaft itself, so I could put it back together where it was. Not the appropriate way, but it's worked for years. So cover your ears. I gotta deal with things called bearing. Look at that, look how easy that come off. All right, let me get this all apart. All right, so I got the seal out. Got the yoke off and the seal out, and I noticed something. There's, I believe there's supposed to be an oil slinger in here, and it's not there. So someone's been in this rear end before, possibly. how the bearings work. They're laying one way and then on the outside the bearings are laying the other way so you have an inner and an outer and then you squeeze them together and the way it works is so this one's like this the other one sits on here the opposite way. Maybe I should just grab that bearing. Yeah there you go. Okay so they sit like this right so as you squeeze 
as you put the yoke on and you tighten up this nut right here, this is how we're setting our bearing preload. And the bearing preload is basically how much effort it takes to turn the pinion, okay? And uh, I think it's like 15 to 20 inch pounds is what they want. Now that's not what the, what the nut is torqued to, that is what it takes to actually turn this with a torque wrench. So um, anyways, we'll, uh, I'll get you set up on the workbench, we'll get a look at that ring gear, and we'll get to looking at those uh, bearings. Let's see what's uh, going on with that. Good thing is, the inside of the housing is pretty clean down here in this hoop. I mean, there's really no metal at all. Um, I can't even see a glimmer in there, so that's good. And again, we'll, we'll hose all this out real good, get it cleaned up, you know, like we did the front one. But uh, let's get over to the workbench. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so this is the race from this, what would be the driver's side. I don't know if that's gonna show up for you guys, but you can see how dull this is, where the, uh, the finish is coming off the metal. Like, so it's a good thing that we took this apart because that would have been a problem. And you can see if it'll show up. You can see the same thing on the rollers of the bearings. So it's a good thing that we took it apart. Um, the pinion bearings, they, they look about the same. Now, to get that pinion, I mean, there's, it is possible that, uh, all right, so there's the pinion. And as you guys saw, it for sure, can you see that there? The finish is coming off these bearings too. So we'll just put all new bearings in the whole entire thing, of course. But somewhere in this shaft, it's bent. Um, and it's not the bearings that were making it do that because it was tight. And, uh, you know, other than the wear on the bearings, I mean, it, they're all intact. So somewhere around here, it's bent. Because like I said, the front seal was leaking horribly before we pressure washed that thing. So, I don't know. But that's where we're at right now. And uh, I'm going to have to uh, do some research whether I replace the ring and pinion and all the bearings. Which, I don't have a lot of experience with that. So that's kind of a um, new territory for me. Um, I mean, it'd be interesting to, you know, learn how to do it and get it figured out and hopefully it comes out successful. Um, but at the same time, it's going to, it's going to be a few bucks, you know. Um, I've looked before, which is, this is the whole reason we didn't change out the, the ring gear in uh, Brandon's truck before was because I really didn't have experience with setting differentials up and I didn't want to do something that would be, you know, not, not last or be a problem. So um, that's why we never just didn't just change a, the ring and pinion on his front and rear axle. That's why we chose to do the, the whole axles. Um, and I had them, so it made more sense. But anyways, it is what it is. What are you going to do, right? So uh, that's where we're at for now. So uh, I'm going to leave you on that one, guys. You see how it come apart. So I'll do some... I'll do some research and see what I can find. If it's going to be reasonable, uh, cost effective, then we'll go ahead and replace the pinion, replace that ring gear, all the bearings, set it all back up, and uh, put it back together. And we'll bring you. If it's going to be too much money, I'll just probably find a used rear end, take the cover off, go through it, get a look at it, put it all back together, make sure it's okay, and. Uh, you know, change what we need to, hopefully not opinion, because I wouldn't be any better off. I mean, I would I would really prefer to do the ring and pinion, but uh, again, 
it's a fear of the unknown, guys. It's like everything else, you know. Um, you've never done it before. Ooh, that one's, um, I'm seeing some things that tell me someone else has been in here. There's a couple. There's a dot stamp there and a dot stamp there. Like maybe somebody did that for putting it together. Maybe they've replaced some clutches before. So, all right, I'm going to leave you with that. And uh, once we figure out what we're doing, I'll bring you back.